Thank you very much for watching this. My name is Rabbi Zevi Weinberg. I am the director of the Party of Us. Now, I want to be very clear. This is not a party. This is a way that America will be unified. Do you think America needs unity? I know America needs unity. The America that I grew up in, I'm actually broadcasting from right here in Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City is a great place. Everybody, I mean, even till today, pretty much gets along. But there's an undercurrent. Now, we, let me, let me share with you the story, and this is why it's so critical. Uh, we have a museum here in Kansas City called the Steamboat Arabia. Now, Steamboat Arabia, it was like this kind of a floating Walmart. In the olden days, you could actually order a cake from France and they'd have it shipped. It was like a catalog. They'd have it shipped over and you'd be in your farm in Kansas. So they'd go down the Mississippi River. But it turns out that there were a lot of these like logs. And so the ship would come and it would hit the ship. And in 15 minutes, the whole thing would sink. Now, the ships were packed with supplies. So there were entire communities that depended on these supplies to get there before the winter. And in, actually, with one of these ships going down, they had to like abandon that, you know, kind of community. But what's amazing is they pull up this ship and it's got, check it out, Steamboat Arabia. It's got like kind of nails. It had, this guy must have been nuts. But he, uh, you know, they're just regular guys. They were kind of treasure hunters and they brought up the ship. He actually tasted olives from, they were put in these like glass jars. I guess they remained for a hundred year old olives. <laughs> He's still alive to tell the tale. But the guy that gave us a tour of this kind of ship, if you want to call it the produce and the products of the ship, he is a marine officer he trains marines and he was very into the civil war he wrote a book about the civil war so i asked him how did the civil war happen think about this for a for a moment america americans are a great country they love each other and then they go to war against each other a war is a really serious thing a civil war how did that happen so he said it happens when the two sides can't talk to each other how far are we? The America I grew up in, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, number one, you were American. You were here for the good of the country. Now we have a situation that one party basically refuses to talk. It looks at the other party as evil and it, it can't even make a compromise. It's like, so this is not okay. And the only way we're going to survive, literally survive, because the threats against us are very real. We have a crazy radical Islam that truly believes, and the numbers are 700 million based on Pew Poll. I'm very into polling. And 700 million people believe that your death is a good thing. And that's just from radical Islam. We're not going to mention about other maybe nations that are just jealous of us. Russia and China are always trying to kind of do us in, whether it's monetarily or this or that. And so the point is that these are serious challenges. I mean, certainly Russia and China are people we have to work with. But people that want to kill you, basically, ideally, we should get rid of all nukes because in the polls that I've taken, national polls, show that, that that's what the best for the world. There shouldn't be a chance. There shouldn't be a fear of this stuff. But we have to deal with this. And if we're in gridlock, we can never succeed. And if we have a situation that one party wins, but it's not something that the American people want and both parties see each other as enemies, so the other party is just going to reverse it. Like, boom, everything, let's say, Trump stood for, Obama, not Obama, um, Biden's reversing. They're giving, or they're trying to at least, give... Um, basically nuclear weapons to Iran. You know, Iran believes that when the world will be filled up to a horse's knee with blood, and it took me a long time, I wanted to figure out why Iran wants nuclear weapons. And I worked very hard. In fact, I asked an Iranian, and right away he told me, they believe that when the world is filled with horses, 
with blood up to horses, knee, the Messiah will come. So the point is that you got to have common sense. There's only one reason to have a government, and that is safety. Now, it's nice to have a government for, I don't know, welfare and for all these good stuff. But number one, you have to be alive and you have to kind of do something that brings the people together and that both parties will say, hey, this is the will of the people. And so there is only one solution. And what I am suggesting, real U.S. democracy is desired by 66% of Americans based on the polls that I've taken. And Pew has done international polls. And in fact, quite remarkably, it's also 66% of the world wants direct democracy, as they call it. What does this mean? This means it's very, very simple. There's only one thing that a government really does besides if it has to fight a war, which you call it foreign policy. But that is it creates legislation, creates rules and laws for the citizens of its own country. We can't control another country. We could try to influence it. We could, God forbid, go to war. We could protect ourselves. But we can't control. We can't create laws from another country. All we can do is create laws in our own country. So the question is, why not do what democracy is meant to do, which is ask the people what they want legislational. And my thing, which has been for many, many years of, of, of thinking about this, the Baal Shem Tov says, when you think deeply, the solutions come to you. Amazingly, one of the greatest brains of our time, Rabbi Schneerson, also had this idea, and the American people want it. And my own independent polling shows me this. Number one, we start off with what are the top 10 issues that the American people want? Why are we going into some kind of radical idea? And I want to bring this as an example. Even if you believe that being gay and lesbian is a good thing, it doesn't even score at a 0.1%. Listen to this. It doesn't score at a 0.1% those Gallup polls, right? Independent polling of what the American people want from Congress. It's just not what they want in legislation. So maybe that's something that somebody thinks about. But that's not what is important to the American people. What's important, uh, definitely the economy and health care and um, uh, terrorism. I mean, obviously, these things go up and down based on the situation. But the American people that I'm a very big believer in, having grown up in mid-America, they know what's normal. They know what's necessary. So start off with what the American people want. And then this is the job of the government, and they have a lot of resources. Figure out the best solution. But then, and this is a very, very important thing. This was, in fact, I believe, how Obama created not enough trust and love for his health care solution, which is why there's been so much opposition. Because Obama came from kind of, comes from a third world country. And when you're raised in that society, and I lived in a third world country for many years, so I know the mentality of that society, it's might is right. Whoever is the chief is the captain, and he's he can do whatever he wants. Might is right. So you have a solution, you implement the solution. Now, that actually works in dictatorships because if the whole country believes might is right, you have to have one person. So a person like Putin, by the way, for Russia is very good because you have to have somebody that has power. Without that, they'll kill each other like we see in Syria. Obama started throwing, helping out the, 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 the let's call it the freedom movement. Maybe it's just radical Islam movement in Syria. And what happened is anarchy. They're busy killing each other. So... The bottom line is that if he would have just asked people, do you want this or not? And then got on TV and said, guys, we've taken a poll and I don't know, 70% of Americans want us to deal with health care. And 65% of Americans think that my solution is a good solution. It's over. You understand? He would have had a solution that everybody would have been happy to support. But he wanted to impose it. So other people said, oh, well, you're imposing it and you're taking our taxes. And you have to work with the system. You have to work with the people. 
I want to say a side note, which is anything that is radical, which is eradicating the system, that it always ends up in complete self-destruction. You have to look at the good that we have, and you have to improve it. Rabbi Menachem Mendel of Kotsk said, what's the difference between somebody who loves truth or hates falsehood? Think about it. Loves truth, hates falsehood. They seem similar. The lover of truth doesn't rest until he finds the truth. The hater of falsehood doesn't rest until he finds falsehood. So anti-movements, whether it's anti-wealth, anti-America, anti-Israel, all anti-movements, they're based in jealous hate. And just like when they killed Julius Caesar, they were against the fact that he was a king because beforehand it was more of a democracy. So they killed him. And it was like, okay, what do we do now? <laughs> because when you just seek destruction, you're not constructing anything. Our job is to make a better America, a better world. And so our job is solutions. It's very, very critical to understand this. Our goal here is to solve the problems in a way that are the things that people care about, the solutions that they want, and our job is to be positive, to do what's going to unite America and bring us all together. And I want to conclude that if you do not act now, there will be a destruction. All of human history, this is all of it, always proves the same thing happens. An empire builds through hard work and effort, and then there is a radical group. I don't want to go into all the psychology that gets behind it. And then they self-destruct it. America and Europe, Europe is a little bit ahead of America, is on the self-destruction phase, and it does not take long. It could be even four years. It will be beyond repair. So if you agree with me, and you agree that America needs a solution, and you have money, because that's what it takes. If I had money, I could have been in politics a long time ago. It's not hard. You just have to basically win a primary and certain districts it's very easy after that if I, I have political consultants that that will, will, will work with me but the bottom line is if you have any ability to make this happen you have the greatest responsibility to the lives of all the people you love the future of the world because mark my words we're either going to kind of grow together or we're going to blow together